Welcome to Beyond the Press Release, a production for GORCOM in which we take the time to speak with small fat, small cap executives right after they put out important news. With us again, happy to have him back because he was with us right before the holidays. Steve Saviak, he's CEO of Valio Pharma, the company trades on the CSC and the stock symbol VPH for our friends in the US under VPHIF and for our friends in Europe under, VB, under VP2 on Frankfurt. For those of you new to the story, that's going to be some of you because the company's been doing great over the last couple of months stock-wise, attracting more and more attention. And of course, we have the long-time loyal shareholders. What exactly does the company do? First of all, they're a commercial stage, revenue-generating pharmaceutical company located right here in Canada. What they like to do is acquire Canadian rights to commercial stage proprietary drugs, and then, uh, and then they commercialize them uh, in Canada and maybe even around the world, but in Canada. Uh, they're focused on uh, ne neurodegenerative diseases, oncology, and hospital, and hospital specialty products. All that translates into financial success, which is the most important part. Uh, $1.5 million in quarterly revenue. That was for the quarter under July 31st. 5.26 for the nine months end of July 31st. And uh, they're doing fantastic as far as their pipeline. Steve, welcome back. George, it's, uh, it's nice to be back and nice to be on Agoracom again. Happy New Year to you Same and to you. the company and Happy New Year to all your shareholders. Thank you. Likewise, looking forward to a good year this year. So we got a couple of important pieces of news to talk about uh, that, that have come out in, in the, right now in the new year. The first one is that you highlighted uh, MD Briefcase, a newsletter comparing Hesperidin and vitamin C for COVID-19 um, and how that and how that matches up with Hesperico, your product. So what was it about that uh, that you're highlighting? Why was that so important? Well, MD Briefcase is an independent um, a group that does a lot of continuing education for pharmaceutical companies So uh, and develops a lot of their own material. Um, they, they did uh, something very interesting. A lot of scientists and a, a lot of research has been centered around hesperidine, which is a, something known as a flavonoid, and it's a, an extract from uh, immature citrus fruit. And they decided to, uh, because of this groundswell of, uh, of new research, to compare it to vitamin C for the treatment of patients either prophylactically, which means before you get, uh, you have the uh, coronavirus, or uh, while you have it and see what, if anything, it, it, it could do and what would be the differences between the two. Um, and it was very, it's very compelling. Uh, this is, there's multitude research studies that they quote from. Uh, and what they have found is that these, these studies seem to indicate that hesperidine itself uh, can slow down the infection from the virus. And it does so by a specific yep. mechanism. It can actually slow down again the reproduction of violet virus once the virus has taken over your cells, and it also has a very uh, a good anti-inflammatory effect um, to reduce or to control this so-called cytokine storm. Because what many people don't realize is that some of the uh, organ damage that's actually done by the coronavirus is actually done by your body defending itself against the coronavirus. It's your own body that's yeah. The, the cytokine storm is where the body starts to attack its own cells. Exactly. So this the hesperidine has these anti-inflammatory properties, which seems to help in that uh, in that particular area. So it's a very um, uh, it's being researched more and more. We uh, we were we worked with a small biotech company in Montreal called uh, Ingenue Pharma, uh, and they came up with a lot of these concepts. And what we did is formulate hesperidine in, in a kind of special way. We're a pharma company, so we took a pharma approach to it. And we developed capsules, so they're capsules that contain 500 milligrams of hesperidine, but adjusted for certain other factors, impurities, and what have you, to ensure that you're actually getting 500 milligram. And uh, the daily uh, recommended dose is two capsules or one gram per day um, to protect your, your immune system, to augment your immune system uh, against uh, all, all viral type of infections, but specifically coronavirus. Uh, and what people maybe also don't realize is, yes, uh, SARS-CoV-2 is a, is a particularly nasty coronavirus, 
but the common flu is often caused by a coronavirus. It's, it's in the family of coronavirus. Right. So very, uh, I think uh, it's, it should be a staple during flu season, uh, much like vitamin C should be. I don't suggest taking one over the other. I think you should take both, but if you're concerned about uh, viral uh, activity, I think you should take Hesperidine. But Hesperidine, and then one again to Hesperico, but uh, Hesperidine, is this all relatively new for the masses? I Obviously, you guys have known about this. That's why you created uh, you know, your format. But is it something new? And is that why it's not getting a lot of uh, media attention right now or, or pharma companies actually testing this natural product? Is it? Yeah, I think that pharma, when you talk about, the, well, Hesperidine has been around since the dawn of, of time. And, uh, and people you know, t- eat citrus fruits and, and have their certain benefits. Uh, uh, when you eat an orange, you get vitamin C, you get Hesperidine. That what, what's the issue is that you don't get enough of hesperidine by simply taking eating an, an orange a day or two oranges a day or drinking half a liter of orange juice. So what you want is the, to, the, the benefits are known. You want to take it in a high enough concentration that it actually has some benefit to your body. Uh, you know, the big drug companies do wonderful things and we're partners with, with a number of them. Uh, we certainly, uh, you know, validate their, their intention of, of, uh, of uh, helping you know us rid ourselves or reduce certain diseases, and clearly today they're most interested in developing vaccines, which is a wonderful job in getting these vaccines to market. Um, in terms of developing the vaccines, they take. But in some doing that, they're sometimes are overlooking what's right in front of them too, right? Well, you know that the the issue is you you know we talked about it you know offline a little bit earlier. If, you know companies have a cost structure and you have to make money. Hesperidine is relatively inexpensive. When I'm talking about taking two capsules of asperidine per day, I'm talking about a dollar a day. This is not, uh, you know, big pharma is looking at, you know, they often say the billion dollar drugs to recoup all of that R&D uh, research efforts and what have you, that they, they must uh, price their drugs in this fashion. So the this lower price of asperidine is, makes this uh, relatively, you know, not interesting. For, uh, and that's the reason why a smaller company uh, like us that maybe has a bit more of a, of a, a broader focus sometimes uh, can, uh, you know, we've had the drug, we, we developed the, the formulation, we had the drug manufactured, shipping in Canada uh, through internet right now, uh, amazon.ca, but it will be available at mass retail. That means your typical uh, pharmacy in the, or, uh, or grocer that has a, a pharmacy section uh, within the next couple of weeks and the U.S. Okay, US- great. Cause I want to ask you, I know we can get on Amazon right now, uh, but great. I want to ask you when will be, when will be in major retailers in Canada. And then do you see, you know, when, when do you see per- potential be going, being in major retailers in the U S well in Canada, we, we, as I mentioned, two to three weeks, it's being fi- all the details on that are being finalized, the marketing plans and what have you. And, you know, the, nice. the way pharmaceutical or drug stores work or pharmacies work is, they have plans so you don't just come mid season and throw in a product because they need to know what's on the shelf. So that's being worked out in the U S we'll start with Amazon again, but we already are in discussions with uh, some retailers and I would expect, uh, you know, mid February is a pretty good estimated launch date in the U S. I mean, are you aware of any other substance having so much potential in the fight against COVID-19? I know that's a big question, but it seems like, it seems like sometimes the simplest things that are right in front of us, like hesperidine, right? Uh, okay. And as a result, I'm assuming uh, hesperico uh, are, are right in front of us. That's correct. I mean, nature does uh, hold uh, the key to, to many of, uh, of uh, nature's home diseases. Uh, listen, it, within the hospital context, there's a number of very good repurposed drugs that seem to be having great effects on getting people uh, safely out of hospitals quicker. What we're talking about with Asperico is, or Asperidine is something that you take before, you're not in the hospital, this is before. So yep. you're either taking on a daily basis that you don't want to, uh, or you want to try to avoid or reduce the, 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 uh, the chance of, of catching a virus. Or if you start to feel symptoms, you're taking it to reduce those symptoms and stay out of the hospital. Once you go in the hospital, they've got other stronger meds that they're going to be using on you. Yeah, and this and, to make sure, hopefully you don't get yeah. there. And, you, and for everyone at home, again, get out. Yeah, right. Hesperidine may interfere, may interfere with SARS, the infection process may help against viral replication and is a potent antioxidant with anti-inflammatory activity that helps 
in control on the cyclotene storm. That's the part where the body starts to attack its own cells and tissue rather than just fighting off the virus. So, you know, very, and that comes out of, you know, m- make sure everyone's clear, MD briefcase uh, put out this newsletter comparing it uh, with vitamin C. And, and that's why we're talking about it here today. Because uh, I'm suggest you, if you haven't seen the newsletter, uh, go to our website, look at our, uh, our, the last press release that we put out uh, uh, last week on this uh, topic. So we summarized it, but there is a link that you can click on and you'll actually go to the newsletter. It's about four pages long. I suggest it's written in yeah. relatively not, uh, not too much uh, heavy duty science. So you, you can uh, easily understandable. I suggest you read it. It's uh, and it's not just one scientist. They, they quote from, I believe, eight or nine different uh, scientific uh, studies that have been published in, in journals and uh, very, very compelling argument uh, to suggest that you should be taking hesperidine. And if you want the right dose, you can get hesperidine in lower doses through some other uh, pharmaceutical or, or natural products. But we're, you know the dose level is not high enough. You're talking 100 milligrams, 40 milligrams. You're going to have to take 10 capsules a day. Ours has only hesperidine and, and uh, the right type of hesperidine because there's a number of different types of hesperidine. Um, so it's, I think it's the simplest and I believe most cost-effective way of, of getting one gram of hesperidine in your body on a daily basis, which is- uh, Well, I'm going to say this, and I'm not saying this as a plug. Uh, sometime next 24 hours, I'm definitely going to go to Amazon and I'm definitely going to order- enough supply for the family and even some of my extended family really mean it for the next month or two months because uh you you can never i mean something like this to be available right under our nose and and not have to spend a ton of money on it and not and an ounce of an ounce of prevention is worth a pound of cure right at the end of the day yeah so yeah so fair you know, code. that's the the brand name of the product Yep, and we're gonna have it up on the screen for everyone, for everyone, for everyone to see as well. But that's great to have that third-party validation, Steve. If I can end it there before we go on to the next topic, is so important because we would expect, you know, everyone would expect you to say nothing but great things about, you know, Valio. I would, I would say nothing about great things about Agoracom. That's our job, right? But when you have this kind of third-party validation, um, you know, from MD briefcase that talks about. Uh, the growing body of research that shows how hesperidine, uh, how do you pronounce it? Hesperidine? Hesperidine, yeah. Hesperidine uh, and, and the benefits I just gave earlier. Well, then that's third-party validation now, right? Now we're, now we're talking about unbiased uh, source that has no idea who, who your company is and who my company is. So that's well, great. Researchers I think that was- were, were trying to find, and there's one particular quote in there, where they tested over 1,100 compounds, including some of the antiviral drugs, what have you, and none of them could block the virus uh, from entering the body like asparagine. It, it, you know, the coronavirus has these spikes with a little crown on top, and that's why it's called the coronavirus. Uh, and asparagine seems to stick to the top, and it prevents, it sort of interferes as much as possible from the virus actually attaching to the cells, and specifically the ACE2 cells in your in your uh, lungs, that seems to be where the, the virus likes to, to host itself. And then it obviously enters your, your, your cells and then starts replicating within the cell. So um, your, your expanded retail operation within Canada, how much of that had to do with, with uh, you know, this newsletter coming out of MD briefcase or were you already way ahead of it and yeah. retailers were already well aware of this and this is already the aware. Course. You know, this was just a sort of a nice thing to see come out because uh, it certainly uh, sort of is the same message that that we'd like to to uh, make sure that people are aware of uh, marketing plans and you'll start seeing a lot more about Asperico. I think some people already are uh, that I, I know I've gotten calls in terms of uh, we, we plan to to make this widely known, widely available in Canada and in the U.S., we think it's important at this point in time. It's a, uh, it uh, and and but as I said, and you said it very nicely, I think it, read it for yourself and get this new letter. Read it once you read it. I think you'll be you'll agree with me that you should be taking asparagine on a daily basis. Yeah, and we'll provide we'll provide the link for it on Agoracom too. But if you're watching this off of you know off of Agoracom, maybe catch us on YouTube or somewhere else make sure you go straight to, to the Valio website. The second part I want to talk about, Valio Pharma announces major addition to its senior management team, specifically Frederick Fasano. 
Uh, he's a seasoned farm executive, over 25 years of experience in managing you know, strategic affiliates with different geographies, Canada, Europe, Latin America. This guy's a heavy hitter. So A, congratulations. That's amazing because in the small cap world, you got to have the people. That's the most important thing. Um, how do you get a senior executive from a well-established leading pharma company to move to a smaller one like your company? He obviously likes what he sees, but I want to ask you specifically. Well, I think what you said is he likes what he sees. He saw the, the and sees the growth potential and the platform that Valio is. So Valio is a number of products, uh, actually 15 right now that we have either commercialized or in development. Uh, he sees the, the other products that are in our pipeline he sees the platform and the platform is our people. We're a fully integrated pharma company. So there's a, a strong uh, base of, of uh, knowledge and experience. Um, and you have to have, uh, so the growth clearly attracted them, but also the entrepreneurial spirit. You have to, moving from a big company to a smaller company always has its challenges. Uh, it has its rewards too, um, both you know professionally and, and potentially financially. And I think, uh, Fred is, is that type of individual that was looking for a, a challenge, uh, has experience in Canada, as you mentioned, in Europe also, uh, in uh, South America. So, you know, for us, what we got is a very seasoned, um, you know, took over, a lot, took a lot of the commercial activities off of my plate so I can focus more on, on some of the strategic uh, activities that we're involved with or, or the, the capital uh, activities. Um, and I think will be, uh, you know, a very is is a very good addition to our team. And uh, today was his first day on the job, and uh, uh, I'm very excited to have we, him. We got to get him on here soon. Steve. We got to get him on here uh, in terms of results tomorrow or what have you. It, it's, it's it's over a period of time, but it's uh, you know what we want to do is continue adding good people to our company because, um, as Warren Buffett even says, you know, it's all about people. It's all about your management. Uh, you want to have a strong management team. And we think that with Fred, we, we've, we've got that. We've, he's hit all our buttons, ticked all our boxes. And, and I guess, uh, you know, the, the opportunity to run. And as he was running a company in Montreal, uh, in Canada, much bigger than Valio is. And, you know, my view of that is you've done that before. So you know how to take a company from our size and bring it up through the ranks to being that mid-tier Canadian. And the experience he has internationally uh, I think just reading between the lines, you know, that's it kind of opens our eyes to opportunities elsewhere. And, and that's certainly things that over the next while over, and I'm not seeing months, but I'm talking over the next several years, we'll be exploring. Well, you said something interesting in your quote. I'm going to read it. This increase in management depth coupled with our solid foundation of products and people positions us well for the dynamic growth we foresee in the coming years. And you've talked about your growth uh, a couple of times now that we've been together, you're pretty confident. You got a powerful pipeline. So give us a little more color uh, in the growth uh, anticipated that you're referring to in your in your quote there. Well, you know, it's uh, growth is is uh, you know many, can be many things, but certainly one of the the key things for a growth company is to have growing revenues, and that's what we will sure. con we'll see this year. We should have a pretty substantial increase uh, over last year's revenues. Uh, and that will come from, you know, that growing revenue comes from growing products, additional products, additional people. Um, so the, the, you know, what we have publicly available uh, in the next coming months, we know Hesperico is going to be, I think, a pretty important product for Valio. We do have Redesca, which we uh, just in got. In the last interview, up, we talked about and that. Coagulant, uh, which will be available uh, late spring. Um and we have, uh, and these will be two of our big revenue drivers this year, but we do have other products or projects in the pipeline that we can't speak about right now that I think some will come through fruition and, and those could be impacting us this year also. So, you know, bringing on, I think again, uh, you know, reading, I'm not saying reading between the lines, but trying to, we are trying to set the foundation for something much, much bigger than what we have today. Uh, and that's what attracted someone like Fred. That's what attracted us to him and him to us, uh, and you'll be seeing additional moves uh, in the coming weeks and months, which uh, are just, you know, continue to build on this. You can't grow a company, you know, we're four, we were probably last spring around 25 people, we're over 40 now, and you know, I could see us, we'll be 60 probably sometime later this spring. So 
um, you know, we're, we're, you know, that growth mode. And I think that bodes well for our shareholders. Well, look to everyone at home, right? If you haven't already kind of made the connect the dots or, you know, the natural inference is you're not taking on someone of, uh, of Frederick Fasano. Is it Fasano? Fasano? Fasano, yeah. I would think so, but I want to make sure you're not taking, you're not taking on someone like Frederick Fasano with this 25 years of experience someone like him doesn't come cheap. You didn't hire, you didn't just hire George out of med school, right? This is someone who's, who, who's had great success. So the inference has to be, you're not spending that kind of money and you're not adding on people to the team uh, just for the sake of, you know, let, let's have more friends around. It's clearly uh, you're anticipating some great growth. So if I want to talk about that just a little bit, I know you can't be specific, but for people who are new, you've currently got, nine products currently that in the in the in the market they're being marketed uh and seven products and that may be upgraded so if it's new let me if it's upgraded let me know but last time we spoke seven additional products in the pipeline That's great. um so you you, you guys are, you, are, are approved you force commercialization now yeah three of the seven are already approved by health canada so they'll be launching um all three will be launching in the first half of this year uh so it's uh, it's exciting times it's uh and um, you know it, it, it there is the you, you know you can feel it i mean it's a little bit more difficult with covid because a lot of of our employees work from home to try to especially we're based in montreal so sort of the the, the shutdown that's happened in our province here uh, but we are across canada we have sales reps across canada um and uh, it's challenging for all companies and it's certainly not it's challenging for pharma companies also uh but you know we continue to build and we're very excited about um, what this year is going to have, we call it our inflection year. It's a year where you'll we'll really make that jump up in revenues and, and just in, in just overall awareness and presence. Uh, and that will continue. And, uh, you know, Fred is the be beginning of, you know, you know, some other people. You're putting your money where your mouth is with that addition. Exactly. That's we for sure. I think that, uh, you know, we, we're, as I said earlier, we're very excited about him joining us. And I think he's very excited, as he said in the, press release about about joining us so it's a it's a two-way street and and that's what how it's got to be and i think uh, uh our shareholders and you know we talked and, we, and i can't stress it enough we have a shareholder group management board of directors employees still own about over 60 percent of this company we are aligned we've put a lot of our own personal wealth into buying shares uh last round was a dollar 20 in september our, we participated even in, in, at that round also uh so we think we're very much aligned with with all our shareholders. We're building a company which should have a, a increased market valuation, increased share price. Everyone benefits. I, I know that would attract me to your company if I was a pharma executive and you were. Look, I would definitely look at that and say, well, when the insiders themselves own approximately sixty percent of the company, that speaks volumes, right? Again, you're putting your mouth is you're putting where your mouth is again you're betting on the growth of the company because you've got a lot of your net worth actually tied up in it. So that's a great sign. And we'd be remiss if we didn't end with this, Steve, for the people who didn't watch the last interview we did in December, let's talk one minute about Redesca because that was big. You got approval from Health Canada. It's essentially, you know, I don't want to just call it blood thinner, but for everyone at home, you, you, it's an anticoagulant, but let's call it a blood thinner for people to understand. But you are thinking that that could add on as much as thirty million dollars a year in in revenue as as it kicks in, uh, give us a sixty second overview there of you know what it is and what next steps are with Redesca. Yeah, so uh, Redesca is as you mentioned is a is a blood thinner anticoagulant. Uh, it's actually the, the technical term for it is called low molecular weight heparin. Uh, it's used. It has been used for many years uh, in the hospital setting. So if you went to the hospital and you had a knee implant, hip surgery, cardiac surgery, number of different types of surgeries, you will probably be, be administered low molecular weight heparin. What it does is prevents blood clots in the extremities. And if blood clots in the extremities do start to migrate into your lungs, it's, it, can be, it can be fatal. It's obviously very dangerous. So I, my brother standard, actually go through that just six months ago. Just it's six a months. standard of care. It's a standard of care. And we're bringing, we, we will be launching a product called Redesca uh, later on this year, first half of the year. Um, across Canada, it's a $200 million market. So we'll be competing for that market, but we think we can compete on a number of bases. Number one will be 
you know, availability. There is, this is a product that can come into shortage. So we have our, our licensor is what is the leading supplier of the raw material and it's got great manufacturing capabilities. We have a great clinical package that's been tested in Europe. They've been using it now for about six years, over 150 million man days of use with extremely safe profile. And this, so this is all, this is historical use in the field, not just on a number, small number of patients, what have you. And that's very uh, compelling in terms of uh, safety. Uh, clearly no one wants to harm patients. Uh, and the, Track record for thing, to right? the Canadian healthcare system is, it's, it comes in at a, at a less expensive price than what's, uh, with, with some of the others, what, what all the others are currently selling at. So that, that's another benefit to the system, which, so it's a win-win for everyone. The patient wins with a safe product. The healthcare system wins with a lower um, uh, budget requirements. And obviously our shareholders win with this, this drug alone, taking us up one, one clear notch in terms of revenues um, and uh, positioning us uh, in the hospital space a little strongly, which will help with some other drugs that we want to in license. Having that hospital presence is very important. So yeah, I love the fact that Redesk has a proven track record uh, and it comes in cheaper because unlike Hesperical, let's say where I might go to Amazon, like the product and might think I doubt it. Uh, but you know, Joe, Joe common, it's, ah, it's a little too expensive for me. Uh, for Redesca, your customer are, is the hospitals and provincial health, health departments right. who need the product. So they got to buy it. Uh, but if you can save them money, I mean, they're all, their budgets are all stretched to the max. So something like this, that's such a staple, right? If you can save the money, then you're, you're in the door. And we're, you know, when you talk about scope of money, we're talking like in the, in the, the a num number of tens of millions of dollars in terms of savings. So it's enough to, you know, as people say, to move the needle in sort of lame, in sort of you yeah. know, terms, it, it does move the needle for these healthcare uh, for the provincial healthcare budget. So it's, it's an anticipated drug. It's a wanted drug. Uh, we're in discussions right now with the various provinces to, in terms of, you know, what, what this new price will be, but very excited for what it will do for Valio. And uh, clearly, you know, Fred is also very excited about it in terms of as a, I'm sure, I'm sure, I'm sure he is. Uh, so, you know, the, we've got an exciting pipeline, key drivers, Asperico, Redesca, OnStrive are, Parkinson's drug that we launched a summer and a half ago is starting to come on as, as again, the governments are starting to uh, look at paying for the drug, uh, which is a key component of any drug sales in, uh, in Canada. Uh, but there, you know, there are other products in the pipeline that I'm, I'm sure will start to gain some attention during the course of the coming months. So very exciting time, uh, Valio Pharma. And, you know, it's, it'll, it's being reflected to some degree in our share price. We don't think enough. We think that that uh, people don't quite still understand, you know, how big a Hesperical could be, how big a Redesca could be, what that really means to us in terms of revenues and profitability. And, you know, I would say uh, just, you know, stay tuned as more news comes out, as we try to make it as clear as possible to our shareholders, how all of this, what does this really mean to Valio? Where, where does it put us uh, in the next year, two years, three years? Yeah, and that's why I think these interviews are so powerful because there's only so much you can say in a press release, whereas here you can give it some real context. That's right. Well, you're a good interviewer also, so you you actually draw out uh, information. Well, you make it easy, right? Because this is powerful information that you just wouldn't be here if we were just talking about fluff or whatever. That we'd be bored and we would have shut this interview off 15 minutes ago. But Steve, congratulations. Thank you've you started. Sure. I mean, we're two weeks in, right? And you've already got uh, Frederick Fasano, uh, joining the company and you, that's that's great third party validation. Big part of a Gorecom is third party validation. Some like Frederick come over coming over from a big company, 25 years of experience. That says a lot. And then you've also got uh, MD briefcase uh, making the case for Hesperidin, right? Which is Correct. big part of Hesperico. Uh, again, third party validation on some pretty important stuff they can do. Yeah. And uh, and Redesca just around the corner, other things around the corner. So you start off 2021 on a great foot and can't wait to have you back. And maybe next time we have Frederick back on with you as yeah, well. It would be great to, to, to hear from him. To you. And uh, yeah, he's, uh, he, he'll, uh, he brings a, a much more uh, technical uh, in terms of uh, scientific, technical and commercial uh, angle that uh, maybe your viewers would, uh, would enjoy hearing from. I only have one requirement, okay? And that is that you and I 
right now are setting benchmarks for great the greatest hair combination in small cap interviews. So Frederick better be in line. I mean, you know, his technical knowledge, expertise, and uh, experience aside, I, may, I need to make sure his hair is up to is up to snuff with with the standard that you and I have set. Okay, well, I'll I, I'll, I'll let him speak for himself on that one. <laughs> No doubt. And, and obviously tongue in cheek, but you know, look, we like to have a little fun here too at the same time, Steve. So look, thanks for joining us. Congratulations. Yeah. Thanks a lot, George. I, I, it means a lot to, to, uh, to be on this show and, and uh, we look forward to, uh, to being back. Yep. I guarantee you're going to be back for everyone at home. You've been watching or you've been listening by podcast on Spotify, Google, Apple, or your favorite podcast platform. So Steve Saviak, He's CEO of Valio Pharma, VPH on the CSE, VPHIF for our friends in the U.S., and VP2, uh, so you know, VPs right across uh, on, on Frankfurt. You've heard and you've watched what Steve's had to say. You've got to do your due diligence, right? And we know there's a lot to absorb uh, because a lot of this is pharmaceutical related, but it's not technical either. That's the great thing, what I love about Valio. It's not hard to understand their products, but you got to do your own due diligence. Okay. So two ways you do that. One, get to the Agoracom hub for the company, punch its name or stock symbol. Take a look at the information we have there. That's powerful Two, watch the last press release we did with Steve just before the holidays. All right. It's, it's fresh. It's still fresh content. I highly recommend that you, uh, that you watch that. And finally get over to the company's website, right? That's the most important place. You got to get there to do due diligence. Look for the article. Look for the MD briefcase article, guys. Highly recommend it. Click on it. It's just four pages, right? But, you know, you've got to make your own assessment, but the information's there just waiting for it. If you do all that, I think uh, you'll find what we find, that you've discovered your next great small cap pharma company. And, uh, and don't say we didn't tell you so 12 months from now. Have a great day. Stay safe. See you next time.